The first speaker for this fishery session is Dr. Rachel Tiller, senior scientist at Sintef Ocean in Norway. Sintef is the leading organization for innovation in the fisheries worldwide. She is in charge of biodiversity research and considers a lot on digital transformation. For example, she was in charge of Every Fish Project, which is a European digital transformation of the catch monitoring. So we will hear from Dr. Rachel Tiller. So through her presentation, we are going to see how we can maintain fishery resources and sustainability and increase the fishery productivity. So let me introduce Dr. Rachel Tiller. Thank you. Fisheries is a critical sector for both food security for a growing population in the future, but also contributing towards reaching biodiversity and sustainable development goals through digital transition and automatic catch participation of fisheries. My name is Rachel Tiller. I'm a chief scientist at Sintef Ocean in Norway. This is one of the largest research facilities in the world. And today I will be talking to you about Norway's digital transition initiative and an EU project that we at Sintef coordinate called Discovery Hub. In this project, we use artificial intelligence to automatic catch participation in fisheries. We think this is one of many tools to ensure more reliable and accurate data in the fishing sector. We do this through developed tools so that the fishing industry can be part of the solution in terms of both biodiversity protection and sustainable development goals. The issue of biodiversity protection and sustainable development is an increasingly important area of focus, as is also evident through COP15 in Montreal in 2022, when the Commune Montreal Global Biodiversity Agenda was developed. 80% of all large fishing projects can contain between 500,000 and 10 million species. That in itself is a threat to fisheries. In addition, we know that more than 80% of all large fish are unmanned, unexploited, and often unsecured. So we need more information. We need data. But we cannot do this if we don't know the cycle, where it is, and how many fisheries are at risk. Now the negotiation with the Community Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, where this picture was taken in 2022 by the Sintef team that was there, this gave us an agreement that can be used as a blueprint for the conservation and restoration of wildlife species, as well as the sustainable use of natural resources, such as the fishing sector and recreation. Now, the global agreement was adopted by 186 countries in December 2022, and it sets out an ambitious roadmap to reach the vision of a world living in harmony with nature by 2030 and doing so while still harvesting sustainably the natural resources from the ocean, such as fisheries. Now, technology and innovation can contribute to help us solve the nature crisis described in this agreement, and at the same time find solutions that can ensure continued sustainable growth of the fishing industry by being a team player with nature and not against it. And this is important since in Europe alone, there are more than 80,000 vessels and more than 100,000 people employed in the fishing sector. And they are critical to ensure that we reach the goals and the targets set out in this agreement. But monitoring and controlling that the fishing industry is in compliance with these goals and targets, as well as all others, is very difficult at best. Now, the main goal in fisheries management is, as you know, to secure the long-term exploitation of fish stocks so that we also have food in the future. This is achieved by setting quotas based on the best available science and to ensure that the sector complies with these quotas and other regulations relating to fishing operations. 
And to describe this a little bit more, I want to take you back to 2007 and my first experience with fisheries control and monitoring in the Barents Sea in the Arctic. And this was during the very beginning of my PhD studies. Now, this is a story about my trip on the Coast Guard vessel KV Svalbard. Svalbard is an archipelago, so it's an island, a group of islands in the far north in the Arctic. And this was the topic of my PhD thesis. So I am a political scientist and I was working on how the change in climate and the change in fish stock migration and other resources could affect international relations in this region. Now, this was a time of a lot of fisheries conflicts in the Arctic and a lot of challenges around monitoring this area for fisheries because of disagreements in international relations around who were the sovereigns of this area. Now that means who owns this area of the Arctic. So Norway said, and it still says, that this is a Norwegian area and other countries do not always agree with this. So at this time, around 2007, I got to be part of the inspection team of this Coast Guard vessel as it boarded vessels from Russia and Spain and other countries, and they monitored and controlled their catches to see if they were in compliance with the Norwegian regulations of this area. And I just wanted to highlight with this little story how difficult this job is when you're doing it manually. Because these inspectors, they have to manually count the fish on board the fishing vessels, crawl into very small areas in the freezing containers, as you can see in this picture. In order to get on board the vessels, they had to jump onto a ladder when a wave would bring the small transport boat that you see on the top left here, high enough for them to reach the ladder and then jump on board. And then they have to make estimates of how much fish is on board each of these vessels compared to how much each of these boats are allowed to catch and the composition of the catch and determine whether or not this boat needs to change the area, if they get a fine, if they get a warning, or if they are even to be brought into port in Norway to be persecuted. And this is very challenging work and it's very inefficient both from the inspector side and from the fishing boats themselves who have to stop operations while they're being inspected. Now, acquiring verifiable data and documentation such as this, however, it was not only a challenge 15, 20 years ago when I was on these vessels, but it also is today in today's fisheries. Now today, uh, the industry has to self-register the catches and report these manually into the system. And there are no demands for documentations per se, but it's controlled at the time of landing that the number you estimate when you catch uh, your catch is the same as the one you're landing. And even though this is done by the best of intentions by the fishers in most cases, even unintentional errors in reporting can lead to poor data quality and it can lead to punishment to the fisher if they are wrong by more than 10% in some cases. It also put a lot of pressure and a lot of work on inspectors because keep in mind, I told you there are more than 80,000 fishing vessels in the EU fleet all across the European seas from the high Arctic all the way down to the far south in the Atlantic, and there are not enough inspectors in the world to monitor all these vessels. Now, the EU has for a while wanted to make this much more efficient, uh, and they want this sector to also contribute towards providing more accurate data and knowledge about the ocean, because we need more knowledge if we are to manage it sustainably. So therefore, the EU, they have had a lot of focus on funding innovation projects towards this digital transition. And in 2023, so that's just about a year and a half ago, uh, we at Cintef, together with a lot of our colleagues across Europe, were awarded the project Every Fish. And this project is about digital transition of catch monitoring in European fisheries. In this project, we develop innovations and technologies for automatic catch reporting in all fisheries, from the factory trawlers that are catching tuna fish in the Indian Ocean, all the way to tourism fisheries using camera technology, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. And we do this together in a transdisciplinary collaboration between science, policy, industry, and community actors. So the aim of this project, Every Fish, is to contribute to the development of these new technologies and towards, towards a digital transition of catch monitoring in European fisheries. 
So as you can see from this slide, there's eight countries involved, 17 partners, and there's a lot of companies, both technology developers and fishing companies. Uh, and we also have uh, government governance authorities, and they also collaborate across Europe with all other governance authorities. And then of course we have research and academia, which I represent. Now in total, we're developing 10 different technologies for five different types of fisheries. And we want to meet the different demands in all these fisheries, and we want all these technologies to fit on board the different types of vessels. Now this slide here is an overview of the different technologies that we are developing uh, in every fish and where we are testing them. So the yellow boats you see on these slides will show you where the different technologies are being tested. Uh, this slide will also tell you about the technology readiness level of these innovations and I'll get back to that a little bit. But uh, as you can see from this, these are 10 different uh, innovations. Uh, and they have different TRL levels and they have different ways of um, bringing in sensor systems to monitor the type of fish you're catching. Now the catch scanner, for example, the top one, uh, is a machine, 3D machine vision system that we use for catch analysis on board on conveyor belts. So as the fish come on board, they go on a conveyor belt and the lasers will estimate the size and the weight and the species of each fish. Uh, now, all these others are different versions of this, going into some details about how they are going to do them, whether it's not for discards, whether it's from a sorting table, uh, if it's use of closed circuit television cameras that are on board a lot of vessels. Uh, and some of them you use with your own smartphone and you just take a picture uh, and it will also give you the, the species and the length and the weight. Uh, in, uh, in this one though, we have different TRL levels. Now I wanted to get into a little bit of them to tell you a little bit of what that is. So TRL stands for technology readiness level. So it's a scale system for one to nine, uh, where uh, we uh, and our technology developers estimate the degree of maturity a specific te technology has. So this scale, it helps you determine well, the readiness level uh, before it can be used on a large scale, before you can start selling it commercially. Uh, and uh, TRLs have nine levels. One is the absolute lowest le readiness level, and nine is where the innovation is commercialized. It's when you start selling it. So stage one to three, that's your research stage. And as you can see on this one here, uh, we only have one that's at that level. That's the catch sep. Now the catch sep. Uh, it's a development of a technology that will film the separator system on pelagic vessels where the fish is separated from the water. So in pelagic systems, you get a lot of fish in at the same time. Uh, and uh, it's difficult to measure how much you get in using a camera system. And there's very little research on it. And that's why this has a very low technology readiness level. But this separator system is a common feature on these vessels. Uh, and it's a location where the fish is more spread out than it is in the tube that takes it out of the water. Uh, and as you can see here, we will start there in the research stage on uh, technology readiness level two. Uh, and TRL two is where you do the basic research and analytical studies and you determine whether or not it's even feasible to do this. And you provide a basis to actually be able to do some applied research. Now we have estimated that during this project, we will reach TRL four on this one. Uh, and that's when you validate the technology in a lab uh, and you do some limited testing and you create a small scale prototype. Uh, on the other scale, you have the catch monitor and the catch scanner, as you can see up there. Uh, now these technologies, as you see up here, the catch scanner and catch monitor, they have very high TRLs at the end. So TRL 9, for example, is when the technology has met all the required standards and is available for consumers. It's been adopted, it's commercially available, and you can have it deployed. You can start selling it. So these are all different levels that we have, but all of them have to reach a fairly high level in an innovation action as this project is. The goal of this project is to get things to the market so we can start using them in the market. 
One of the focus areas of what we're doing is developing different types of scanners that can capture full 3D images of fish and crustaceans, generating a completely identical 3D model of the fish, a digital twin. And AI will then say, oh, I like that picture. Show me one million more of the same. So we generate these images to train the dedicated AI to recognize the species and estimate their length. And the process will then be like, first you catch and you haul it on board the fishing boat. And then the fish goes on a conveyor belt and the trained AI is able to estimate the weight, length, and species of all the fish as a result of this deep learning training. And this gives a less expensive and more efficient system than manual catch registration and allows the fishers to check in real time if their catches are within their current quotas and regulations. Now, after all this data has been captured with these technologies, and these are lasers, they're CCTVs, they're cameras, they're different kinds of sensors. After that, the data is stored with one of our partners, the Norwegian Marine Data Center, which is hosted by the Institute of Marine Research in Norway. This is our data repository, and it is used to help us set up more reliable quotas for the management uh, and uh, to generally monitor the marine uh, environment and detect changes due to, for example, climate change, but also give more information for the consumers that are interested in where their dinners are coming from and what gear is used. Now, the digitalization of fisheries management is for um, some to the best interest of both the fishers and the fish, as well as the managers and the consumers. And there are many reasons for this. And some of these are, for example, it'll lower the barrier of entry to take up artificial intelligence technologies in the fishing sector. It will also give us better work conditions and more accurate catch reporting in the fisheries at large. We can detect anomalous fishing events. So these are things that are different from what is happening normally. So that the control authorities can do some more targeted inspections like those I showed in the beginning that I was part of. And it will also allow us to advance the digital transition for fisheries inspections and control and get more data so we can be more in compliance with the Kunming Montreal uh, biodiversity framework. We know that the ocean covers more than 70% of the earth, as I mentioned earlier, and it's a critical source of protein and oxygen and medicine, and will continue to be so in the future as well. And fishing, both commercial and recreational, as you see here, is important for livelihoods and the lives in general of fisheries all around the world. And European fisheries are getting more and more modern, and new technological solutions are going to make us even better, because in the future, Technological advances based on artificial intelligence and cameras and sensors and all of those things that aren't even invented yet is going to help us to automatically determine the species and size of each fish that is brought on board. And all of this is going to be with less reporting for the fisher themselves. And we're going to know the catch amount, the position, the temperature, even the sex of a crab can be digitally collected and shared within the industry once this is all implemented. And not only will these new technology make reporting easier for those of us that work at sea, but they will also give us more data that we need for the global biodiversity framework, give us better knowledge and make it easier to document a sustainable industry for future consumers and for our children in the future. The consumers in future are going to wonder where their fish was caught, when it was caught, if it was caught sustainably. And then we, as a fishing society, can be proud to say that we fish with a clean conscience and that we take responsibility for the environment and the resources that we manage. And we will get better documentation with reduced effort and we'll get more data and we'll become more transparent and sustainably and with less effort and we will have improved documentation, which is really critical for the global biodiversity framework and the sustainable development goals. But can we have a sustainable fishing sector while contributing towards the SDGs and the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework? Can fisheries be part of the solution for the triple planetary crisis? Well, we will argue that to do so, the industry has to adapt and be part of the data collection solution as well, so we can have more knowledge about what is happening in the oceans and better contribute towards these goals. And to do that, we have to be even more innovative and use more sensors on board fishing vessels 
and work on data collection solutions that all are comfortable with. Now that is what we're doing in every fish and different sectors will be affected by different regulatory changes and technological solutions. And we do want compliance by design, but this has to be grounded with the end user, the fishers. And collaboration and co-production of knowledge is the key to the successful implementation so we can achieve sustainable harvesting and verifiable data. And this governance needs to be both verifiable and transparent. And for us at Cintef, as coordinators of projects on such technologies, it's important to ensure that these innovations are relevant for management and the industry. So we hope that we will succeed in developing technologies that will benefit both. But this is also a dangerous workplace. An increased burden on reporting could pose a real danger to those that work here. And therefore, we want to make sure that we provide those that work at sea with the tools that are not cumbersome or difficult, or that could pose difficulties for them when operating dangerous equipment in a dangerous environment. And to do this, we have to have a digital transition on fisheries far beyond what we currently have, and fully automate the fisheries for the fishers themselves, for monitoring and control, for research, and for biodiversity. Thank you so much for listening, and if you want to know more about this project, please contact me. This is my QR code to my LinkedIn page. Thank you.